check, check. Microphone check. I'm not going to freestyle rap, don't worry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those were amazing talks. I'm super stoked on the, the future of design. I also have a secret that I didn't start as a designer, so I'm kind of uh, secret that way. Uh, I started into aerospace engineering and then uh, went, moved into industrial design, and I kind of blend these worlds of, of engineering and design. Um, but we, it's really interesting uh, seeing those talks uh, before, because you see this movement of design uh, kind of moving into a more strategic role from, from how we traditionally think of it. And that's very much what we focus on at DX Labs, is using design for vision and, and strategy. We'll talk a little, little bit about that. So this is pretty much what we do. <laughs> if, if I were to you know, explain it in a nutshell, we help teams, uh, both early stage startups and uh, kind of skunk works within larger corporations, take a step back and think about what their long-term vision is uh, in a pro process called future casting. Um, so we've done this with many different companies over the years. Um, it's interesting, we actually work with Momentum Machines really early on, the hamburger uh, company. Uh, it's funny, I, I visited their office and they had a had it grilling hamburgers. Uh, I walked in and ate a robot hamburger, I guess. Um, but yeah, we work on uh, what's now known as exponential tech um, and apply design strategy to these technologies and problems. Uh, we worked on augmented reality for Lowe's for uh, steel case, inventing new services, uh, you know, creating vision and, and prototypes. Uh, we've worked on drones with uh, a few companies, um, uh, conversational AI for, for healthcare, kind of exploring these, these new worlds where design, um, you know, designers need to become literate in how to leverage these technologies to create new, new experiences. Um, we worked on robotics, uh, so this is an underwater robotics company called uh, OpenROV, a really, really cool startup. Eatsa, uh, which I don't know if anybody's eaten at Eatsa before. It's kind of a, a robotic quinoa restaurant. Um, and now we're, of course, getting into blockchain. Um, and, you know, through working with all these companies and in corporates, uh, I'm, I'm sure you sometimes feel like you have a vision. You go in there as an agency, uh, you do all this great work, all the amazing packaging, <laughs> and you wonder why they don't implement it. Um, you know, you create this amazing vision, and what is it about, uh, you know, working with a company where sometimes it feels compromised, and you're like, it's not, it's not quite what we wanted. Um, it could be so much more, and we kind of took a step back as an agency and asked ourselves this question, why do we always, you know, well, not always, but sometimes compromise our, our long-term vision? Um, and if you look at current processes, um, I love the, you know, speaking about lean startup methodologies and it's kind of iterative design and, and experimentation, um, you know, this is kind of a typical process. So startup is a rocket. <laughs> You know, when you talk to the, the founder, the, uh, the team, you're like, what is the moon that you want to land on? Uh, and they tell you a story. Um, and it's not, not quite as clear as it could be. Uh, the story is a little bit fuzzy. And, and if you start interviewing the rest of the team, you get kind of different flavors of the, <laughs> of the same story, um, all related but not quite aligned. And you realize, you know, they must be doing, what are they working on every day? Are, are, they, are they moving towards the same, uh, you know, North Star? And, um, you know, if you're doing experimentation, you kind of, you know, there's this concept of a local maximum. You may be reaching the most potential right now. It may be able to acquire, uh, you know, enough customers to, to have positive ROI. But as far as taking a chunk out of getting to your long-term vision, it might be coming up short. 
and then it falls down. <laughs> um, so what we do uh, at, at DX is work hard to get the vision really, really clear and as concise as possible. And typically, you know, obviously you can't predict the future, but you can tell a story about how you want it to be. And we found that that's very satisfying uh, working with founders. They have a vision in their head that's, that's crisp, and we just go through you know, facilitating conversations to sort of beat it out of their head. <laughs> and then we work with um, authors to tell that story uh, and conceptual designers to make it clear and crisp. And that normally takes you know, a couple weeks. Then we go through a process of retrocasting, which is reverse engineering the steps to get to that vision and identifying any big uh, roadblocks, whether that's regulatory constraints or you know, acquiring you know, corporate customers, whatever it might be. And then within this context, this is where we apply lean startup methodologies to define experiments to, to start testing, can we take a chunk out of our moonshot in the next you know, two months or three months? And sort of, I, I like the analogy of uh, base camps on a mountain. You know, you, you kind of know where the summit is, and you might kind of edge your way up to a base camp, and you look around, get to your next base camp to get to the top. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, the process of feature casting. So it's, it's a process of describing your, your moonshot or your North Star, um, and focusing on its impact on society. Because if you really look at a, at a company, a startup, a group of people, a government, they have a vision of society. There's a really good uh, quote, Eric Ries, where he says, the best scale entrepreneurs don't reinvent a product, they reinvent what they think society could be. And so this is a, a workshop that we just did with Utopia Cities. Does anybody know them? No? They're pretty new. Um, but <laughs> this is, uh, they're working on slums, the future of slums, and, and we focused on Rio de Janeiro, um, which have been a couple times. And, uh, you know, during this process, uh, I like what one speaker said about making sure that all the stakeholders are, are there. You're crafting a vision that should be representative of the representative of the people that are gonna be impacted by uh, the future that you foresee. So we actually had um, people on the other, this was pretty hard to do, a future casting workshop remotely, um, but I think it was worth it, because they had um, uh, people from the slums that talked about their lives and pressures and all the decisions that they had to make and added significant depth. We would have made really dumb choices without having them there. Um, you know, making predictions about their life. Uh, so I think it's really, really important to have diversity, to have every stakeholder there uh, while you're going through this process. Um, we look at the good, we look at the bad. This is something that we did, uh, what was it, a year and a half ago, on autonomous trucks, a um, little bit <laughs> more dystopic. Most of them are a little bit more utopic, but... Um, looking at the impact of autonomous trucks on the US economy. It employs, I think it's 40 million people <laughs> in the trucking industry, which is just kind of insane. So we look at some of these technologies and project different scenarios and kind of prototype certain outcomes. Uh, and this is, this is one that we, we published, and uh, we were really interested to see some conversations on Reddit. You know, there was a trucker that was like, if policy rolled out where I would be compensated this way and I would be, you know, go through the education system, I would actually be okay with that. And it served as a kind of public prototype of uh, leg legislation. Um, uh, this is a, a future casting session we did with uh, Singularity University and about, what was it, 10 or 15 other companies neuroscientists and exponential tech people uh, rethinking the, the future of home. Uh, and this was Antigua, Guatemala, after they got hit by a, a tsunami and they could rebuild. 
So there's this concept of modularity in public space uh, that's kind of embedded into their community. So we form these visions of cities of the future and pick elements uh, out of that. And that kind of impacts strategies that, that companies can take. Uh, this was a really fun one. So I'm showing you the ones that are pretty stretched out there <laughs> to show you where the limits are. We got really interested in the Neuralink, neuroscientist and engineering our, our own minds. Uh, so this is a story uh, written by Matt right here uh, that focused on the uh, brain-computer interface and exploring that future. Uh, and then we really think of these stories as tools for facilitating conversation. Um, so after, this is an event that we host called a Futures Reading Session, uh, and we read the story, go through the art, kind of project, um, you know, you take constraints and sort of project them to their logical conclusions. That's what the story is, and you form these conversations around them. Uh, so this was uh, a group of people, uh, an engineer at Neuralink, uh, Jody there is principal of design at HoloLens, uh, just people who have been thinking about this stuff and they kind of know what the roadblocks are. So we facilitate a uh, conversation around that. It's also like a neuroscientist that just got out of surgery like the same day, <laughs> just walked over here. Um, and then, you know, none of this is useful unless you can take action on it. So the process of reverse engineering the steps to get there and identifying a short-term experiment or prototype or something that you can do right now to prove to your investors, your customers, everyone, that you can take a solid chunk out of there. You can launch your first reusable rocket. Uh, you have to show that you can make progress. So this is a project we did uh, called um, Vision for Lowe's. And, and uh, it's looking at the, the future of remodeling uh, the interior of your house using this uh, technology from Google called Tango. Uh, so it's actually mapping the, the inside of the house. Um, and it, it was interesting because we talked to them about how they envisioned success. And for them, it was actually, I think, going through a process where you, you understand their goals and their the needs of the client at a really deep level. So we always kick off our engagements with a workshop that's just like, how do you define success you know, like personally? <laughs> like, I want to know what you define su success is. And uh, you know, they're like, well, I want my team to grow. I want my boss to you know, promote me. I want all this stuff that's really kind of like egocentric. <laughs> and you're like, and it, at a, a company level, it's like, I want to, Lowe's wanted to form a, uh, you know, a brand image of a technology company, of somebody who's pushing the boundaries of tech uh, so they can recruit more technologists and innovate. And uh, we're kind of like, oh, I thought you, we started, you just wanted an augmented reality app, but you want us to bring the, the cool stuff, okay? We can do that too. Um, so we, we did this app and we were inspired by uh, video game interfaces. So we actually use Fallout for, if anybody's played that. Um, for like the placement of items and kind of like inventory management. Um, and it was cool, they got in a fast company, they got featured in uh, Google I.O., uh, they got a ton of press and uh, you know, fulfilled their, their true needs. Itza, um, they were really focused around, you know, their moonshots around making food affordable. They focused on the future of restauranting. Um, and kind of rethinking that whole front of house, that point of sale system, uh, and making this magical kind of delivery experience. So we did the, the flow, the kind of like physical digital uh, flow as you move through the space. What does it look like before you get there? Does, does it remember your preferences, what you like, make personalized recommendations? Uh, and then you pick up your food and you get a little name. If you haven't been there, you should definitely Check it out, um, and they yeah they raised a bunch of money. They built I think f five locations. They're probably at like ten or fifteen now. And uh, you know when they opened these huge lines down the block, but they just churned through it because it was so quick. They they could get through two hundred people in like thirty minutes. Uh, another company we work with was Open ROV. It's like an underwater robotics 
company. Uh, and they challenged us with creating a platform for sharing expeditions. There's a lot of people who are excited about exploring the oceans, uh, but they didn't really have a platform for contributing scientific research. Uh, so they wanted to kind of democratize scientific research and empower all the, the citizen scientists. So we made Open Explorer, and this was, this was a byproduct of it, so I think it was a, a couple years after we launched that, uh, they just announced this partnership with uh, National Geographic, which we're super, super excited about. Um, so this is a platform that allows anybody to track explorers and watch their stories and look at their images and, and kind of um, follow them. So it's, it's almost like a new sort of uh, media outlet uh, into our natural world. Uh, this is a project we did with a company called Precision Hawk, which is on the East Coast. They're a, they're a drone company, but they're really, they're really a data company. Um, so I actually recommended they got out of hardware, even though I love hardware. <laughs> but it, um, they do precision agriculture, they collect data on crops. And we created a platform that allowed farmers and, and uh, people working on industrial applications to take action on that data, because that's really what matters at the end of the day. Um, so we worked on that entire pipeline from you know, working with the drone operator, planning out the field, driving up your truck, taking the drone out, capturing the data, uh, bringing it back all the way to like the little data stick that they put in their machines to distribute pesticide and fertilizer. Um, so user experience kind of spans the whole gap. Um, yeah, and they just, they raised 75 million, I think, like three or four months ago, which is nuts. <laughs> Um, and we ended up improving their their operational tempo, which is like how fast the the pilots can uh, can serve these survey these fields by ten times. Uh, and then we worked on a drone traffic management system, which I know sounds very sexy to <laughs> designers, um, but it was very very important. It was like one of the the dots that was a, a high risk. Um, you know, challenge for the company because they, they wouldn't be able to raise any money or do anything if the FAA didn't allow them to fly. So it was a big blocker. Um, and we actually designed a prototype to just, we're like, it can't be that hard to just track a drone position and send it off. Uh, so we literally duct tape a phone to a drone, I think like two or three years ago, uh, and started to try and put these no-fly zones around trees and like ram the dr drone into the tree, which we did accidentally a few times. But um, eventually it worked. It was demoed to the head of the FAA and, and uh, they didn't see it hit trees. Um, and it was approved to be the first platform for out-of-line site flight. So it, even though nobody's probably heard of Precision Hawk, they're the first company that could fly uh, compliant with our regulations, it's pretty cool. So we're always uh, you know, looking to work with people who have a, a healthy disregard for the impossible. Uh, you know, if you're a little quirky or a little ambitious, we're, we're always hiring and we're looking for great collaborators. So thanks.